So the question reads about Dipico Limited is a manufacturing company which makes a wide range of products, which makes a wide range of the products. So one of those products require the use of the special machine. It requires the use of the special machine where they say that current policy of Dipico Limited is to replace the machine more frequently due to the fact that it is productivity declines and the running cost increases as it gets older. Then they have said that there is insufficient demand for the company's product. It is manufacturing, manufacturing using the machine to justify purchase of the second machine. So the company sells the product made by the machine at 12 shillings each, at which price it is able to sell up to 500,000 units per annum. Variable cost, excluding machine depreciation on the running cost, amount to four shillings per unit. So they have given you the year of the machine life, productive capacity, running cost. The cost of buying the machine is six million. The resale value of the machine is four million for a one year old machine, 2.5 million for a three year old machine, 1 million for the three year old machine, and a zero for the four year old machine. The company provides depreciation to all four it is non-current assets using the straight line method. So the all cost and revenue are paid or received in cash at the end of the year to which they relate, except the initial cost of the machine, which is paid immediately on purchase. The company has an annual cost of capital of 10%. So required advice on whether to replace the machinery every one, two, three, or four years. We want you to advise them whether to replace every one year, two year, three year, or four years. So the question that we, the way we shall answer it, we shall first calculate the, uh, the NPV for that particular year and also the annuity for that year. So we shall be picking the one the highest annuity. So we need to prepare the cash flow statement first to get the cash flows to be discounted. We need to prepare the cash flow statement because cash flows were not given. So in our cash flow statement, in our cash flow statement, we need to come up with the cash flow statement. So there is year one, year two, year three, and also year four. We need to prepare our cash flow statement where we shall be having year one, year two, year three, up to year four. So we start with the sales revenue. We start off with the sales revenue. Start off with the sales revenue. Start off with the sales revenue. So sales revenue, you are given the production capacity. You see like now machine life year one, the production is 500,000 units. But when you check up there, the previous paragraph, they were able to give you the selling price as 12 shillings each. So we shall be taking the units multiplied by 12 shillings each. So you take the 500,000 multiplied by 12. So when you take 500,000 multiplied by 12, you give us how much? You give us 6 million. Yeah, so year one, it is meant to be 6 million. So the same case for year two, because the capacity is still the same. You see year two, it is also 500,000 units. The selling price per unit is 12. So 500 multiplied by 12. So it is 500,000 units. The selling price per unit is 12. So it will still be 6 million, like the first one. But there are three zeros at the top. Then when you go to year three, there are still there are 400,000 units. So when you take 400,000 units, also multiply by, by 12, which will give us how much? 4.8. We get 4.8. How about year four? It is still the same figure because the units are still the same. 
So that now will be for the sales revenue. There is also in the same part, when you go to the same paragraph, where there was the, where there was that number of the units, they also gave you the variable cost per unit. You see before the end, variable cost excluding machine depreciation on the running cost, it amount to how much per unit? Four. So we also subtract the variable cost. We also less now the variable cost. Variable cost. We still use the same units. So year one, take 500,000 units multiplied by four. There's two millions. Yeah. Yeah, so also year two, we also do two millions. How about year three and year four? When you take 400 multiplied by four, 1.6 each. Then there is another cost that was given. Are you able to see the running cost? Yeah, yeah that one has been given. So there is 600, 650, 750, and 900. We also less, we can also be able to less the running cost. So those ones were given, there is 600, there is 750, sorry, 650. There is 750, there is also 900. So there was no tax. That means there is no need to depreciate the machine. There was no tax. So <clears throat> there is no need for us to. <coughs> there are also no fixed costs that were given. So now this should be the same as our annual cash flows. This now should be our annual cash flows. So what is there for year one? 3.4 million. How about year two? That's 3.50. How about year three? Twenty-four fifty. Then finally should be. So those figures who are not given, you are meant to calculate them. They were not given, <coughs> you are meant to calculate them. So we now start with replace after every one year. Let us now check when we replace after every one year, two years, three years, or four years. Now check when we replace. We are using the equivalent annual annuity method. And there are basically two steps. So we start with replace after every one year. Replace after one year. Step number one, we calculate the NPP. Step one, we compute the NPP, which is supposed to be given by the present value for the cash inflows. We minus present value for the cash outflows. So that should be our step number one. So to get our NPP, now that cash flows are not the same, we shall spread them in this corner. So there will be the year cash flows, then present value interest factor. The cost of capital is given at the end of the question. But see, they gave us what percent? Yeah, so present value interest factor 10% each year. So that we now come up with the present values for that. So we start off with year one. We start off with year one. So we calculated the cash flows for year one. We computed the cash flows for year one. We got which one? Sorry? Three point four. Yes. So we got three point four. But now. We are replacing it at the end of year one. 
So we have the resale value of our near old machine. Are you able to see the resale value for our near old machine? Yes. How much is it? Four. It is four million. So after you receive the 3.5 million, you replace the 3.4, we replace it and we replace it by selling it at four million. So we add the four million. We add for year one, because we are replacing it after one year. So after it has generated 3.4 million, we sell it at 4 million. So that will give us how much? 7.4 million. Then what is there as 10% in year one? Zero. 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 So now multiply 7,400 by 0 0.9091. 67.37.34. Yeah, so we are replacing it at the end of year one. So which means this figure is the same as your present value for the cash inflow. We are replacing it at the end of year one. So that amount we have calculated is now the same as our present value for the cash inflow. So we minus the present value of the cash outflow. So present value for the cash outflow will be the initial cost, which was given in that paragraph number, the, when you are the second last paragraph, you can see the cost of buying the machine is how much? The second last paragraph. You can see the six millions. Yeah, so the cost of buying is six million. So we minus now the six million. So that we get the net present value. So that net present value should be now how much? 727.34. So that's now the NPV. When we replace after every one year. Remember there were two steps when we are using the equivalent annual annuity method. So the second step, we calculate the annuity. We calculate the annuity, which is supposed to be given by NPV, then present value in this factor for the annuity. It is 10% for one year. It is meant to be 10% for one year. So our NPV, we have just calculated 727. There are three zeros at the top. That is 340. There are three zeros at the top. So that means the total is 727,340. So we are now using the first table, so that the second table, 10% in year one, because it's year one. But year one, whether it is table one or table two, the figures is normally the same. Yes. Now divide my graphic, 0 0.9091. So that is now when we replace after every one year. That is when you are replacing it after every one year. So now we go to replace after every two years. We want now to check when we replace after every two years. This is now replace after every two years. We want now to check when we replace after every two years. So we start again. We compute the NPV. The first step is to calculate the net present value. So we start afresh again, where we compute the net present value. So to compute the net present value, 
it will simply be the present value for the cash inflows minus the present value for the cash outflow. So this time around, we start with the year one. So year one has no receiving value. Year one, we shall still include it, but only the cash flows, which were 3.4. Because you are not replacing it in year one, we replace it in year two. So we also now include year two. So how much were the cash flows for year two? We can play. We got how much? That's 350. So confirm the resale value of a two-year-old machine. You are given 2.5 million. So add there 2.5 million. So that will come up with the value for year two. So how much is that figure for year two? So you get 58. So what is there in the first table in year two? 10%. 0 0.8261. So this year one will give you how much? When you take that 400 more by 0 0.9091. Sorry? 0.94. 0.94 like that. So also confirm for year two. So when we add them together, what should it be our present value for the cash inflows? So that's nine point. So you also now list the present value for the cash outflows. We minus present value for the cash outflows, which is meant to be six millions. So that we get the NPV when we replace after every two years. So that NPV should be 19 or 0.38. So that's now the step. <coughs> Number one, we got the step number two where we get the annuity. So we also have the step number two. So step two, we calculate the annuity. So remember, annuity will be NPV divided by present value in the structure of the annuity 10% for two years. So that NPV is 19.25. So there are three zeros at the top, we make it create. So in the second step, what should be 10% in year two? 1.7355. So that's now when we replace after every two years. That's now when we replace after every two years. So we now go to replace after every three years. After that one, we shall now also replace after every three years. Let us also come up with when we replace after every years. Also check when we replace after every three years. So after every three years, we start again NPV should be equal to the present value for the cash inflows. We minus the present value for the cash outflows. So we start again with the year one. So year one cash flows will be that 400. But year two cash flows, now there is no reserve value in year two. 
year two, we simply did part three fifty. Year two. Now there is no research value in year two. So we now factor in year three. We should now be in a position to introduce year three. Now be in a position to factor in year three. So, what were the cash flows for year three? We prepare the cash flow statement 2450. Then, confirm in the question what is the resale value for a three year old machine? The resale value for a three year old machine is given as one million. So we add. So that now it will be 34. So confirm in the first table what is 10% in year three? 0 0.7. 5.3. So year two, when you take 3350 multiplied by 0 0.8264, that one should give us how much? 20. Then the one for year three, when you take 3450 also multiply 0.7513. 25.9. So we add them together. Sorry? 8451. So this now gives you present value for the cash in this. So we need now to guess the present value for the cash outflows. We guess present value for the cash outflows, which was the initial cost. And the figure was 6 million. <coughs> so that NPV should be 20 was. 24, 51.3. Yeah, so that's now the step one. We still have the step number two, where now you get the annuity of that figure, whereby we now compute the annuity for that value. So annuity is supposed to be given by annuity will be given by NPV. Then present value in the structure for the annuity 10% for two years. So that should be 2,451,365. So confirm in the second table. Or if you wish, you just add these three years. 2.4868. Yeah. Those figures, you can still add these three. They will still come to the same. Yes. <laughs> no, that's that's eight. I added them when you look at the six eight. Okay. Yeah. So that's more rounding off, but it is the same. The second table is the cumulative total of the first table. The second table is the accumulated total for the first table. That is now when we replace after every three years. So finally, when we replace after every four years. So finally, we check when we replace after every four years. Now replace after every four years. 
Start with the step number one, where we compute NPP. So we have one cash flows, we have three cash flows. Now we have to change because now there will be no resale value. So this should now go to twenty-four fifty. Then we include year four. Now we also include. Four. Also, now include year four. So year four, they had no result, but when you check through the question, there is no result value for the four-year-old machine. But cash flows we calculated. You are getting how much? Three. Two point three. Exactly two point three million. Yes. yes. And uh, then confirm in the table what should be ten percent in the year four. Six eight six zero like that. So, your three should give you how much? 19? 18, 40 points. Then the one. 685. Then the one for year four should give us each year. 18, so that's 15, 0.1, So add them together to give you the present value for the cash inflows. Yeah, add them together to give us the present value for the cash inflows. So how much should be the total? 92.965. So finally, you also get the RT for that. You should now also come up with the RT. Whereby you take LPV. Then present value of infrastructure for the RMG. So 10% for four years. So what should be 10% in year four? So we compare them now. We compare that and when you replace after every one year, two years, three years after four. So we pick the one of the highest because it is the end of the and we now compare all of them. So you pick the one where the annuity is maximum. So which year? Okay. After every three years? Two years? Yes. So after every two years? Yeah. yeah. So we can now make a conclusion that the optimal replacement period the optimal replacement period is where the annuity is maximum. The optimal replacement period is where the annuity is maximum. Is where the annuity is maximum. Therefore, replace after every. Yes. 
No. Mm. Therefore, replace after every. So online, you are getting which here? But we have said that the optimal is which year? Two. Two years. So the optimal replacement period is after every two years. That is where the NPV, that is where the NPV is maximum. So there is one more question on that. There is the one for May, May 2017, question number five, part B. So check the one for May. 2017, question number five, part B. May 2017, there's a question number five, part B. <coughs> May 2017. Question number five, part B. So that question reads that Juma Limited operates a machine. Juma Limited operates a machine which has the following maintenance costs and resale value. <coughs> and the resale value over it is four year life. So they are able to give us purchase price of the machine is 25 million. The purchase price of the machine is 25 million. So they have given you year one, two, three, up to year four. Maintenance costs, also resale value. So the company's cost of capital is given as 10%. The company's cost of capital is given as 10%, so required. Advise the management of Tuma Limited on how frequently the machine should be replaced. We still use the same format, but this time around, costs are more than revenue. Costs are more than the revenue because there is no even revenue. What is an income is simply the result value. And most of the time, the costs are more. You can see year one, that one at least result value was higher. But year two, year three, and year four, the resale value is less than maintenance cost. So this one, we shall approach it from the cost direction. We shall approach it from the cost side because costs are more. We shall be getting the present value cost. Then when we get the annuity, remember we pick the one with the lowest. We pick the one with the lowest cost. So let us check when we replace after every one year. We start with replace after every one year. So we start with replace after every one year. So this time the costs are more. When the costs are more, we get the present value costs. So we start with the replace after every one year. Replace after every one year. <coughs> So because costs are more, our step number one will be present value of the costs. Present value of the costs. Our first step, now it is not the net present value. It will be present value of costs. So there will be the year and costs. 
and present value interest factor. The present value interest factor. So the company's cost of capital was given as 10%. So it will be 10% of each year so that you come up with the present value. 10% each year so that we get the present value. So when we start, we are on the cost perspective, we start with the zero because we are looking at the total cost. We are looking at the total costs. So year zero is the initial investment. Initial investment is normally incurred in year zero. Yeah, so we start with year zero. We start off with year zero. So how much was that initial cost? The purchase price is the initial cost. So they gave you 25 minutes. There are three zeros at the top. So year zero, it is already in present value terms. Obviously, it a poor one. I'm not going to have a comment. And then figure is the power of negative zero. See, this is zero. Yeah. And remember to calculate year, one, year zero. Year, the one for the first term, which is normally one plus R, that's the power of negative N. So any figure raised to the zero, it is always equal to one. And the value raised to zero is always equal to one. So alternatively, this figure is in year zero. So it is already in present value terms. So this present value cost will just remain 25. So we are looking at it from the cost perspective. So we include the initial cost of buying the machine, which is now in year zero. Then we go to year one because we are replacing it after every one year. So cost part which is the maintenance costs. How much is the maintenance cost for our one year old machine? Yeah, so we take the 7.5 million but subtract the resale value. This time we subtract. When it was the cash it was you are adding. But this is a cost. So when you minus, is it 15 million? So the difference should be negative what? So it should be negative 7.5 7 million. 7.5 million. So what is there in the table? Year one, 0 0.9 0 so now when we multiply by that negative 7,500, it should give us which value? Negative 16,18. Negative 16,18. It is negative 18 point. Yeah. So when you, these ones are negative, it means you be subtracting it so that you get the total present value costs. Total present value costs. So you get the total present value costs. So it will give you here. So that is now our present value costs. So the step number two, you get the annuity costs. We now compute the annuity costs. We now get the annuity costs. So to get our annuity costs, we still be the present value costs. We divide by present value interest factor for the annuity. So 10% for one year. 
because we replace it after every one. So it will be 18 million, 181, so they also divide by 0.9 or 9.1. So that is now when we replace after every one. So we now also check when we replace after every two years. We now go to when we replace after every two years. So when we replace after every two years, we start afresh where we get the present value costs. Where we get the present value costs. So year zero is not affected. We just repeat the way we had written in the replace after every one year. Year one, now there will be no resale value. Year one will only be maintenance cost, which is 7.5. Which is 7.5. Then now we include year two. So this time year two, maintenance is 11 million, but the resale value is 10 million. So we get the difference, which is 1 million. So this time we have to have it as one. Then you remember you have to in the table it was 0 0.8. Eight. So that year one should give us which figure. Sixty-eight, eighteen, point two five. So add them together to give you present value costs. So when we add them, we are getting how much? 22. Hmm? also get the annuity of that cost, the step number two. We get the IMT costs. So to get the IMT cost, it will be the present value costs divided by the present value in the structure of the IMT. 10% for two years. <laughs> One point seven three. That's now the annual cost when you replace after every two years. When we replace after every two years, 
that is now the figure that we have. So the next one is now to replace after a yes. Next one is now to replace after a So this is 12.5, so we subtract 7.5. So that difference will be which value? It will be 5. So what is there as 10% in the equation? So 0 0.7, okay. 0 0.75, 100. So this year two should give you how much? So then? 90.4. How about the R3? But the seven fifty six. So we add them together to give us now the present value. Forty four six fifty five point. Point six six five. Point six six five. And now you also compute the annuity costs. You now also calculate the annuity costs. So annuity costs, we simply take present value costs divided by present value interest factor of the annuity, 10% for three years. So what is there in the three? Two point four eight six nine. Two point four eight six nine. Yeah. And finally, you check when now you replace after every four years. Now confirm when we replace after eight or four years. Now confirm when we replace after eight or four years.
work. In year four, there is 15 million. Resale value is 2.5 million. So that difference will give us another 0.5. So year four, it is which value? 0 0.6. So get that present value cost and also get the annuity for that. So compute and also calculate their annual costs. Get the total also come up to what is supposed to be their annual costs. So we compare all of them. So we're selecting the one of the lowest hand. So once you get the total present value cost, also remember to calculate the annual cost for that. Now pick which year. Your four is the lowest. There is year four and year three. So year four, the total is which year? It is 18. The total cost was how much? 50 what? 58, 58837.4. Yeah. So what is there in the table for four years? 3.1699. Yeah. So now when you divide, you are getting 18 what? 560. Yeah, so we are comparing them. Which one has the lowest? Is it year one, year two, year three, or my year four? Year one for year three. Yeah, so when you are approaching from the cost perspective, you pick the lowest. So now we can make a conclusion that the optimal replacement period, the optimal replacement period is where the annuity cost is minimum the optimal replacement period is where the annuity cost is minimum, is where the annuity cost is minimum. Hence, replace after every 
three years. Hence, replace after every three years. Hence, replace after every three years. So that is now the key area they normally examine you. But let us also check the other one. There are two of them. The equivalent annual annuity method and the replacement chain method. So we had listed the two methods. You check in your notes, we had said that there were two methods when we make the replacement of the assets with an equal economic life. You can see the second method in your notes. It was replacement chain or common life method. We had listed them. But now the common one in your exam is what you have done, the equivalent annual and But this one for the replacement chain, I will just show you something small because I've not seen any question in the past paper on the replacement chain method. So let us write something brief about the replacement chain or the common life method. We can write something brief concerning the replacement chain or the common life method. Replacement chain or simply the common life method. So for that, we summarize that under this method, under this method, under this method, is that the economic life of the projects, under this method, the economic life of the projects, the economic life of the projects is made to be similar, is made to be similar, is made to be similar by carrying out, is made to be similar by carrying out continuous replacement, by carrying out continuous replacement by carrying out continuous replacement. Let me continue by noting that the optimal replacement period, the optimal replacement period is at the least common multiple. The optimal replacement period is at the least common multiple. The least common multiple. You know LCM? Yeah. This common multiple, it is still the same concept of the LCM. So I will give you an illustration. There is no question in your past paper on that. So I'll just give you a small illustration to demonstrate how it works. Then now we conclude on that item. So we can write down this illustration. We can write down this illustration by summarizing that. Consider the following two mutually exclusive projects. Consider the following two mutually exclusive projects. The following two mutually exclusive projects. Mutually exclusive projects. So we have two projects which are mutually exclusive. When projects are mutually exclusive, they serve the same purpose. So you need to pick only one. You should be able to select only one. So we can be having projects that is project X and so project Y. Then the initial cost. So for X, it is meant to be, it's meant to be 100,000. Also for Y, it will be 100,000. And cost of capital, cost of capital. So this one is 10%, even the other one should be 10%. Economic life, economic life. So X will be two years, Y is 
Permit annual cash inflows. Cash inflows. So there is year one. So year one for X, you can have 60,500. But for project Y, you can have it as 66,000. Also year two, X, it is still 60,000. 500, but why we should be having for four thousand? So there is nothing for project X because it is 40 years. X is 40, so be, but this one will be 20. So now required. Required is that evaluate the two projects. Evaluate the two projects using the replacement chain method. Evaluate the two projects using the replacement chain method and advise the investor using the replacement chain method and advise the investor and advise the investor and advise the investor. So we start with Project X. Start off with Project X. What we do, we are simply calculating NVB with the replacement. We simply compute the NVB with replacement. So we start off with project X. So to get the NPV, we should be present value for the cash inflows minus the present value for the cash outflows. But we need to get the least common multiple. We shall first get because we should make their life to be the same by selecting the least common multiple. So you remember X, it was two years, Y it is three years. So which is the least common multiple? So the least common multiple is a figure where each one of them would go to without any decimal point. So it will be six years. Our list of uh, their economic life will be six years. We make them to be the same by carrying out continuous replacement until we have them. So that means X, you replace how many times? You get the six years. Then Y? Ah, X will replace twice. The first replacement will be at the end of the second year. The second one is at the end of? The fourth year. If you go to the replace again in year 16, go to year eight. So X will replace it twice. Y will replace it only once. Because the first three years is not a replacement, it is the normal economic life. Now we replace it once to make it six years. So the least common multiple is six years. So we are computing now the one for X. X will only be replaced twice. We get six years. So we shall be having the year, then also the cash flows, then present value in the sparta. The cost of capital I gave you was 10%. Then direct. So we start off with the year one. You can see the cash flows for year one, it is 6,500 for project X. Check, we are having a 6,500. Then year two, I know it is also 6,500, but we replace it at the end of year two. We replace with the identical item. 
which will incur the same emission cost as the current one. You can see the emission cost for that project X. It is how much? Yeah, so you minus the amount you are going to pay to replace it is 100,000. So apart from receiving the 6,500, you replace it. When we replace, we replace with the identical asset, which will incur the same cost as the current one. So the cost for the current one is 100,000. So we minus from that amount to give us negative wash. Negative part nine, five one. That's now when we replace at the end of year two. Then now year one is the same as our year three is the same as now the cash flow for year one. Now it's a new cycle. So our cash flows for year three is the same as the ones for year one. Because after replacement, year three is the same as year one. Then year two is the same as year four. But we are replacing it again at the end of year four, where you take 6,500. We still replace it with the identical item, which will incur 100,000. So that we also get negative 39,500. Negative 39,500. So when we replace it at the end of year four, now we go to year five, which is the same as year one. It will also be 6,500. So we are not replacing it again. Year six is the same as year two. Yeah. Year one, we were 6,500. Year two, it was also 65, but we replace it. Where we pay 100,000 to replace it. This 100,000 that we are paying, we replace it with the identical asset which must incur the same cost as the one that we have. So we minus the 100 to get negative, that 9,500. So year three is the same as year one after down the replacement. So we still use this one at that point. Also year two, it is still this amount, year four. That. So year five is again year one. But now we are not replacing it again. So year two is year six, which is now the same as 16. So you can see the cash cost for year two, it is 65. So we are not replacing it in year six, so that we have it a bad question. So now we check in the table. But this one we use from year one up to year six, each year seven. Each year seven. So this one is 0 0.9. 091, you can give me 0.08 to us. 8264. 8264. Then 0.75. 7. 13. Year 4 should be 0.0. 6. 6. 6. 8. Year 5 should be what? 6209. Finally, 0.5645. 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5. Yeah, so we multiply these figures by these values so that you get the present values. Then now you will add them together to give you the present value for the cash inflows. So we shall be required to add them together. Then now you less what was there as the initial cost, and it was one hundred thousand. So that you get the NPV.
Mimi kamu dapat akan Thank you. 
So, we are family. We are family. So someone was asking why we are not replacing at year six. We had said that the least common multiple would be six years. So the common life would be six years. So we cannot go beyond year six. If you replace it again at the end of year six, then the machine will have eight years as the economic life. But LCM was six years. We had discussed that the, lower, the, the optimal replacement period is at the least common multiple. So least common multiple between two and three years is six years. So we cannot go beyond year six. So if you replace again in year six, it means economic life would be eight years. So that's now for X. That is for X. Let us now compute the one for Y. We also calculate the one for Y. We also compute the one for project Y. So the cost of capital was the same. The cost of capital was the same. So what do we do? We simply check. So year one cash flows for project Y were how much? It was 66. Year two, it is. Then year three. So you take 20, you minus 100. Because it also had 100. So this will give us negative what? Negative 80. To be able to be negative 80. So year four is the same as year one, which is 66. Then year five is the same as year two, which is 44. Then year six is the same as year three. This time we are not replacing it. We just use the 20,000 and get the new NPV. So when we do for project Y, we shall summarize it in that manner. We are only replacing it at the end of year three. When we get to year six, that's now the end of the economic life. So that we have them in that portion.
So pick the one with the highest entry in the investment. Is it project X or project Y? Why is the one the highest? So the advice is to select project Y since it has their highest NPV with the replacement. You select project Y since it has their highest NPV with the replacement. So the last time they had tested something on that was May 2012. You check in your past papers, May 2012. There is a question number two, part A. The last time they tested was May 2012. There is a question number two, part B, not A, question number two, part B. There is a question number two, part B. So there is a question number two, part B. May 2012. Question number two, part B. May 2012. Question number two, part B. So that question two, part B, May 2012, question number two, part B. Where they say that as a newly appointed finance manager of Tena Limited. So May 2012, question number two, part B. As a newly appointed finance manager of Tena Limited. So you are required to choose between the following mutually exclusive projects. It will be on which page? Yeah, I'm going to page 90. Others, it is on which page? 93. 83. So mine is on page 90, but they are saying also page 83. But can, so you can see that question number two part B as a newly appointed finance manager of Tena Limited, you are required to choose between the following mutually exclusive projects. So they gave you net cash inflows in shillings for project A and project B. So year zero, then year one, two, three, four. So you can see project A, it has two years. Then project B has got four years. So the company's cost of capital under the similar risk level is 12%. So now required raw manager one. Net present value of each project using constant scale infinity period replication criteria. That is the same as the replacement chain method. That constant scale infinity period replication criteria. That is the same as the replacement chain method. Then Roma letter two, annual equivalent value of each project. That means they have tested both method, replacement chain and the equivalent annual annual method. Then finally, Roma letter three, they want you to make a decision on which project to undertake. So let us check that Roma letter one. Roma letter one, that's constant scale infinity period replication criteria is the same as the replacement chain method or the common life method. But now I want you to check. Project A has got two years. Project B has so the least common multiple will be how many is? 
Now it will be four. So that means A will be replaced once. There is no replacement for project B because we just make life to be the same. Under the common life, we make the life to be the same. Now that the least common multiple will be four years, we only replace once for project A, no replacement for project B. Then we come up with that. So we start with project A. We start off with project A. We start off with the one for project A. Start off with the one for project A. So the common life is four years, the least common multiple is four years. So we shall be having the year, then the cash flows, then the present value interest factor. The cost of capital is 12% for each year. So that we come up with the present value. So year one, the cash flows are 200 for year one. So year two, it is 500, but we replace it at the end of year two. We go to four. So we replace with a similar item. You can see year zero, the cash flow is 250. So we incur 250 to replace that asset. So it will be how much? The difference is also 250. Then come year three, now it's the same as year one, which is 200. Year four, now it is 500, because we are not replacing it again. Year four is now the 500, because we are not replacing it again. So 12% in year one in the table. 0.8. 8 Then we are 2. 0 0.7972. We are 3 it should be 0 0.0. 0 0.7118. Then finally, you are 4 0 0.6355. 6355. Yes. Yeah, so now you multiply those cash flows so that we come up with the present value of the cash inflows. So you minus the present value for the cash outflow, which was meant to be the initial cost, and it is 250. It's simply 250 like that. So that now should give us the NPV replacement for that project there. So we do the same for project B, but B there is no replacement because it also have four years. So we just get the normal area. We do the same for project B. We shall be required to do the same.
So which one has the highest entity to the replacement? Yeah. Yeah. That means when we are using that method, we select project A because it is the advice in the Roma letter three, where they make a decision on which project to undertake. So for the Roman letter one, that means we select project A because it has the highest NPV. Then that Roman letter two, we are now using equivalent annual annuity method. That Roman, when they ask you to get the annual equivalent value, we are using the equivalent annual annuity method, whereby first get the NPV, then get the annuity of that NPV. So we can only do for project A because project B there was no replacement. So when you are using the equivalent annual annuity method, so in the Roman letter two, you are supposed to use the equivalent annual method. So you start with project A. So which project are we selecting? So our first step, we compute the NPV, which is present value for the cash in your minus the present value for the cash outflows. So there is the year, then cash flows, then present value in this factor 12% each year, then you get the present value. So remember year one, this time we are not using the replacement chain method. We are using the equivalent annual annuity method, which has two steps. The first step gets the NPV. The second step, we get the annuity of the NPV, which is which is what they are asking you to in the Roman letter two. So year one for project A, it is simply 200. Then year two, it is 500. For 12% year one and the year two, you multiply by those figures so that when you add them together, they will give you present value for the cash inputs. Give you present value for the cash inputs. So how much is this one? Yeah, one should be which here? 170. 178.5958. How about the one for year? 395.6. So when you add them together, they should give us 398. So when we add, they should be which here? Four. Five seven seven point one one ratio. So unless present value for the cash outflow, which is now the initial cost, which was two hundred and fifty. So get the NPV. Is three twenty seven. How many? Yes, yes. three twenty seven point one eight. So that's NPV. There's the step number two where you get now the annuity. So annuity should be NPV divided by present value in the structure for the annuity. Twelve percent for two years. Twelve percent for two years. So. It is simply 327.18 to confirm in the annuity table 12% for two years. For 
farm get to the percent. One point six yeah. So that's now what they were asking you in the Roman structure. You just get the NPV. After getting the NPV, get the annuity of that NPV. Because they were asking you to get annual equivalent value of each project. Just get the annuity for each project. Just get the annuity for each project. So that is now our project A. For project B, you already have the NPV because there was no replacement. So we still use the same NPV for project B. There was no, we already have that NPV. So for project B, project B, we already have the NPV. So the annuity will simply be equal to NPV. Divide by present value interest factor for the anti 12% in year four. So, what was the NPV for project B? We got which we have then confirm 12% in year four for the and So for project B, there was no replacement. You already have the NPV. We still use the NPV for the Roman letter one. So whether you use replacement chain or equivalent annual and the decision will remain the same. The decision will remain the same. So you have selected which one? Yeah, so it still select A. So what is remaining there, we shall just look at it in the next class. And then there is this information that is remaining. And we shall discuss it very slowly. Dan Zamandi. Smutapujamandi. Yes, you have finished the other class, the one that's normally there on Monday. Yeah. The classes are supposed to end today, but I know from the end of the top of the class. Exchange rates, we must test you. You can have black and spoils, you can have binomial model. So at least we shall discuss it slowly with the Eleweka. Yeah. We shall do it very slowly. Even just discussion in the class it will make a difference. But they must test you something on that item. Exchange rates, all the past papers, they have exchange rates. Uh, they have those. So we shall do it very slowly and see how it will be able to turn out. Even if we do it the same day and then you go for the exam tomorrow, it will have a difference. You can write a formula, <laughs> which can give you two marks, and it makes a difference. When you are 49 and you get two marks, it turns to how many marks? So the first mark is normally 51. A half. Even in Kenya election, you must get 50 plus. <laughs> so when you get 50, assume you are failed. So make sure that you get 51 so that you'll be on the safe side. So we shall discuss that paper slowly on Monday. If there's a small balance remaining to our public on Wednesday, because you normally have a normal class on Wednesday. That paper, there must be a question on it. And if I leave it, I will be the one to be left. This was not tested. So we stop there. We meet on Monday, the normal time. So it is normally since. Yes. Yeah. So that we see what we can get from that.